one of the things that really is intriguing to me is why the the Japanese government, which is a very sophisticated government, I mean, Japan has been with us for hundreds, if not thousands of years in one form or another, right? And they live on an island which is constantly beset by earthquakes, right? Yeah. Yep. How could they have been caught so flat-footed, again, an expression we use over here, and be reacting in such a, frankly, unprofessional manner? I don't understand it either. It's very strange. Unless they are encountering forces and indicators that are baffling to them, or they are under some kind of constraints that you will allow this catastrophe to unfold because it needs to make a major impression on decision makers and policy makers on this planet that if you don't do exactly what we say, we will eliminate you, we will destroy you, and this is our demonstration of our capability to do exactly what we say. Uh, there is a... An Israeli security firm actually in charge of the Japanese nuclear facility prior to the disaster, a year and a half ago before or something like that, they put in a, a safety system and things like that. I'm not saying that they are solely responsible for this, uh, but uh, you know, who, who, who do you think would allow, if anything, a, a disaster like this to, to happen if, that was a, if this was meant to happen in that sense? Or again, are we looking at a, a fluke kind of situation where, where one thing just unfolded after the other? But just as you said, Richard, why wouldn't they be uh, prepared or have uh, better equipment uh, in, in place? It's, uh, it's an earthquake-rich uh, you know, country, a zone. Well, what, what's even more baffling is people say, oh, the Japanese are independent and reliant. Well, they're not. The Japanese are very dependent on each other, and they live on a very tiny island. They import 100% of their oil. They have no oil. 30% of their energy needs are met by nuclear power, but this is very old nuclear power. I mean, these plants were, were built by GE back in the 60s. They're like Mark I. They're the first generation yeah. of, of nuclear reactors that were deployed commercially on this planet. And the idea that they wouldn't, when they, when they, to even anticipate, given that they can look at the statistics just like we can and see the rising number of earthquakes. Have you looked at any, any USG charts over the last month or two at how many earthquakes, big earthquakes we've had in the Pacific mm -hmm. in the last uh, year? Mm -hmm. There's an extraordinary number. I mean, 6.0 earthquakes now are routine in the Pacific. It never used to be like that. So you have this rising background of nature. Remember, these are natural cycles. Under that cover of a natural background, you can hide all kinds of mischief and pass it off as just an accident due to the forces of nature. You know, that you can't, you can't box with God is, is another expression one could use. Hmm. But I'm finding the post-catastrophe reactions so bizarre because they don't match the people who I know have the expertise and the organizational talent to if they don't have, you know, necessary resources at home, they call on help. We live now in an international climate where when you have a disaster, the whole world pitches in and helps, right? Yeah. That has not happened in Japan. Why hmm. not? Yeah. I think it's because somebody's been told, don't do that. Yeah. I, I, so, uh, look, I am grasping, like everyone else, at some kind of rational explanation for the irrational. Yeah. Why would you build a nuclear plant in an earthquake zone at the edge of the ocean, on a, on a, on, on, basically on the shore, with a lousy 25-foot-high wall to prevent a tsunami from sweeping you back into the ocean when you know you live in a, a place for thousands of years that has had earthquakes. And if you look at the USGS data or your own geological scientific people, you can see that major earthquakes have been increasing for decades, monotonically, very predictably, and it's only a matter of time until a big one hits close to you and you have a huge tsunami roll ashore and do exactly what what was done. Yeah. This is not rocket science. This is not magic. This is so predictable, and yet they've done nothing. Have uh, they done nothing to prevent it? As they were told to do nothing. They, they've been uh, even making it worse because the Fukushima plant had actually kept over, I think, over 40 years of spent nuclear rods underneath the plant. So I think over, I think someone mentioned a number of about 600,000 spent fuel rods 
might potentially be uh, you know radiating out as we speak because again we c- they barely can get close to these uh, damaged reactors i think four in total now have been damaged so we have no well, idea how in- much is get- getting out there richard what's interesting is we're not given accurate numbers we don't have an accurate survey we don't even have cutaway drawings of what the plant looks like we don't have you know in- in independent readings of the radiation we are we are literally living in a controlled disaster unfolding, and that's not even counting the horrors of the earthquake, which have killed untold thousands of people, and then the tsunami, which drowned those that managed to survive. I mean, this is this is a three uh, triple whammy, and it's not being responded to in the way that other disasters had been responded to in, in the past. It's. Uh... It's very strange again. Just what you the, the point you bring up uh, about how uh, either other you know the international community is prevented from from helping out here in, in Japan in one sense or another. I mean, look at how quickly they were uh, ready and and uh, willing to intervene in the internal affairs of Libya. Now that wasn't any problem, uh, but here in in Japan, where there is potentially the the entire population of you know the northern hemisphere is at at risk. <laughs> it's it's crazy. Well, I have heard numbers quoted something like 1,700 metric tons of radioactive rods, uh, you know, nuclear fuel rods that are stored in these ponds uh, waiting for when they can be transported to some kind of permanent storage off-site. And because these reactors were the first generation of nuclear reactors that General Electric built back in the 60s and 70s, they have to store those rods on-site in a swimming pool and they put them on the upper floors of the same buildings that are built around the reactors. Yeah. So if, if a catastrophe comes along and wipes out your reactor, it also wipes out your capabilities to keep those, those spent fuel rods cool, as we are seeing. I mean, this is like a perfectly scripted disaster, perfectly scripted. It's, it's awesome to watch. It's painful to watch. It's like we, sh- we should know more. And we don't. And then the question is, why don't we? Well, obviously, because some people don't want us to know. And if they don't want us to know, it says to me there are things behind the scenes, political things, that they really don't want us to know. And that's why they're trying to keep us in the dark.